Congratulations, you are part of the most important committee within your organization, the Occupational Health and Safety Committee. But now what do you do? What are your roles and responsibilities? I have so much to share with you on how to become an effective committee member. Hey Rob. Hi Kathy. Glad you could make it today. Same for you, Crystal. I know things have been busy. Shall we get started? Hang on a second. What's wrong with that picture? Should they be continuing the meeting with those in attendance? No, this does not meet quorum. According to OHS legislation, each committee must have worker and management representatives, with at least half being worker representatives in each meeting. Hi, Bob. I'm glad you two could make it today. We needed more worker representatives. Now that everyone is here, let's start the meeting. Okay, let's take a look at the agenda. Now, Mike, did you prepare the agenda and send it out to everyone in advance? All right, what's wrong with the picture this time? Is it Mike's duty to prepare and distribute the meeting agenda? No, this is the duty of a co-chairperson. Now, Mike, did you prepare the agenda and send it out to everyone in advance? Kathy, I prepared the agenda and distributed it to everyone, as it is my duty, not Mike's. Okay, thank you, Crystal. Let's call this meeting to order. Who's taking the meeting minutes today? Nobody volunteering? Okay, fine, I guess I'll take the minutes. All right, so what's wrong with the picture this time? Should Kathy be taking the meeting minutes? No, the meeting minutes should be taken by someone who is not the co-chairperson, as they have many other important duties to do during the meeting. So who should be taking the meeting minutes? Let's go take a look. Who's taking the meeting minutes today? I can do the meeting minutes, that's okay with everybody. Now that's a better alternative. The meeting minutes should be taken by someone who's not the co-chairperson. It can be another committee member or someone who's not even on the committee but comes into your meetings to take the minutes for you. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Oh, and just a reminder, Lisa Chavity, safety advisor with SHSA, who is an expert on safety committees, will be joining us today. She's going to share with us some pointers on what we can be doing as a committee to be more effective when it comes to injury prevention. Okay, let's start with old business first. We have a few action items from last meeting that we need to look at today. The first is the leaking water cooler in the break room that was creating a slipping hazard. We decided last meeting that, you know, since we couldn't get this machine repaired, we would get it replaced. Mike, you were tasked with looking after that item. What's the update? Uh, did you order a new machine? Is this something the committee should be responsible for? No, the committee is there to make recommendations to management, who then has the responsibility to make decisions based on those recommendations. I sent the recommendation to purchase the new machine to management. A few days later, they did get us that new machine, so the slipping hazard shouldn't be an issue anymore. So we can remove that from the action items now. That's great, thank you, Mike. Uh, the last item on the action list was, uh, did anybody update the safety board? There were lots of winter safety posters still on it, and there was still a poster up for the Christmas committee social. Uh, did anybody update the board? <laughs> that Christmas party was great. I remember when Richard slipped on that ice at the front of the building, <laughs> and he, he took two people with him too, it was, it was funny. <laughs> I mean, they were a big pile on the ground. It was like slow motion, eh? <laughs> but, I mean, at least nobody got hurt, but it was really funny. <laughs> uh, uh, I wonder if anyone ever looked into that ice patch. Oh, well, I guess it doesn't really matter since nobody got hurt. <laughs> this is a bit of a tricky one, but what was wrong in that last scene? Is it correct that since no one actually got hurt, the incident didn't need to be reported or investigated? No. The incident needs to be reported and investigated immediately after the incident. This way, the committee can review the documents and provide recommendations to management. Bob, as a committee member, should have encouraged the worker to report the incident immediately. So nobody updated the safety board? Okay, I will leave that on as an action item for our next meeting. All right, we're almost at the good part, but I just can't let that one go. Should they have left updating the safety board to just anyone? 
No, they should have assigned a specific name as well as a target date. That way this will ensure the task is completed. This will then be recorded in the meeting minutes and circulated for everyone on the committee to see. Now let's get back to the good part. Hello everyone. Hey there. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me to your meeting today. So I have a few things to go over with you today. Um, as we know, our main purpose on the committee is to help with injury prevention in the workplace. Uh, so my first question for you is, do you currently receive any sort of stats or reports from management about the injuries that are happening in your workplace? No, nothing at all. Um, so that is really important to receive those reports and stats from management uh, so that you know where to focus your efforts. Um, and that's really important as a committee to know where to focus that injury prevention. Another thing that you can be doing is reviewing any sort of safety policies or procedures within your organization. Um, you can check if they're being effective, if people are using them, and that information you can gather when you're out doing your workplace inspections. That's a great idea. You can be a great asset to management by participating in workplace inspections. Even if management normally conducts the inspection, you can go along to be that second set of eyes. You will be specifically trained to identify hazards, as well as what recommendations to put forward to control those hazards. Remember, you are the safety experts. You can also discuss with management how you can be involved with orientation and training of new workers. Uh, it's really important for workers to know who's on the committee and any sort of projects that you're working on. And lastly, always be looking for opportunities to bring safety awareness to the organization. Uh, you can really get creative with this, have a little bit of fun. It really builds that enthusiasm for safety within the organization. Um, and I saw that you have a great safety board out there, so that really is a good start to build that enthusiasm. Safety boards are something you can do to be proactive as a committee. The board should be in a common staff area and include things like safety information, forms for easy access like incident report forms, and your harassment policy. Committee minutes should be posted here for all to see, and this is also a great place to highlight who is on the committee. You can even include pictures of each member if you are a larger organization. This is a great area to include resources for workers along with training opportunities. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing all of this important information. It's really great advice. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for having me join your meeting today. Okay, bye. 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 See ya. There is one more thing on our agenda to look at today. It has been brought to our attention that there is an issue with excess sunlight coming into the shared office of Sue and Samantha. Because of this, Samantha is getting glare on her computer screen. Any suggestions on what we can do? Why don't we move Samantha's desk away from the window and pull Sue's there instead? Great idea. Let's give that a try. Thanks for getting together again on such short notice. We need to revisit some options to fix the glare in the shared office of Sue and Samantha. Now Sue is experiencing glare on her computer screen. Any other suggestions? Why don't we just have some blinds installed? Really, Mike? Blinds? I got an idea. Why don't we give Sue some sunglasses to wear? I like it. Decision made, meeting adjourned. Remember, everyone on the committee has an equal voice. Management is there representing management, but they have no added authority over anyone on the committee. Every decision that is reached within the committee meetings should be with a consensus. That way we're working together as a team. Mike's decisions were rudely discounted, while Kathy's decisions were taken as final word. This can create roadblocks within your committee meetings. I spoke to the committee and the management team and suggested they take the SHSA training course, Your Safety Committee and the Law. I have a feeling we'll be seeing this committee again very soon. 
When I found out I was going to be taking the occupational health and safety training, it was um, exciting for us as a team to finally be able to get our committee in place and to know what steps to take to make that happen. I found it more effective because it was geared specifically towards hospitality. So everything that we learned within the training was geared towards hotels or the hospitality environment in general. So I just found it to be more, more informative because this is the industry that, that I'm in every day. Just knowing that there's so much involved in, in having an Occupational Health and Safety Committee and everything that comes along with it and how to document it and how to keep records of it and it's all stuff that we should have been doing for quite a while and it's great that we have it in place now. Canal Hotels is a family owned and operated business and so being family owned our team members really become part of that family. And so safety and security is, is of utmost important to us and we really believe that's our duty to provide that to our team members. The reason we need these committees is, is, is just that, is, is that we continue to identify safety issues within the hotel um, and that the team members have a voice and, and they feel that they can talk about those issues because they are important and they can watch out for each other. Working at a place that takes safety seriously, I think is, is critical in, in people choosing their careers and who they want to work for. So for us, I think we want to gain a reputation that we care, uh, we care about our people, we care about our team members, and we just want to make sure that that resonates um, with them and they feel that they can talk about safety, they feel that they can identify safety issues, um, and that they'll be rectified and they'll be heard.